<clears throat> what's up tribe how you guys doing go ahead and hit that subscribe button and i hope you like this video this is the real housewives of salt lake city it's season five episode seven i know i promised y'all i wasn't gonna get behind but i guess i lied i ain't lie on purpose though anyway we are here so we are still at the party we are at the mafia wives party child and um Lisa and Whitney are getting into it because Whitney is insisting that Lisa was the one that tried to tell the blogs, expose the Alibaba jury, and Lisa is like, it is not me. Child, Lisa get on the phone like she's going to call her attorney because she want to sue for whoever is lying. And then the two of them get to argue and then the husbands get into it. Listen, I don't even care anymore at this point about who... Like, I don't think there's really any one husband to blame because I feel like the husbands were doing what the husbands were supposed to do because Lisa did sort of snap at Whitney's husband, but Whitney's husband did sort of snap at Lisa and was like, my wife's not a liar. And Lisa was like, your wife is a liar. And he was like, my wife is not a liar. And then he sort of got loud. So then Lisa's husband jumped in, which is what he was supposed to do. When you see another man getting loud with your wife, you're supposed to check him. I'm not mad about it. But I also understand Whitney's husband protecting his wife, saying, look, my wife didn't lie. Because he was in the car. He heard the conversation. So in his mind, Whitney isn't lying about what Whitney is talking about. But at the end of the day, I can't take none of this seriously. You know why I can't take none of this seriously? Because Angie decides that she needs to bring the temperature down in the room. So she wants everybody to pray. And she gets Mary Cosby to say a prayer. And Mary going to tell Lisa and Whitney, I need y'all to hold hands. And Lisa, she tried to act like she didn't want to do it at first. But then she ended up going over there. And she ended up holding that lady hand while they was in prayer. So that's why I can't take none of this seriously. Because honestly, you wasn't that mad. You wouldn't held that lady hand. You wasn't that mad. So then Whitney and her husband ended up leaving. And Whitney is all in her feelings because she just know that she right. Listen. Up and Adam said that you ain't tell the truth. Now, I don't know. I wasn't there. I wasn't on that call. And I do know that just because we heard the phone call down to the show does not mean that they didn't edit that conversation and make it say what they wanted it to say. But neither here nor there. Everybody left. The party was over. So the next day, we have Lisa feeling some kind of way about how everything went down. We have Whitney feeling some kind of way about how everything went down. And we have the husbands feeling some kind of way because for real, for real, they like each other. Right? They really not beefing like that it's just a matter of them coming back together and trying to resolve it now you got whitney husband over to the house pouring out all the products that they own that um belong to that come from lisa barlow like her 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 vodka and and i guess she sells energy drinks or something too i don't know but you do know how stupid that is right sir they already have your money like i've never understood that concept of well we're gonna burn all the things that we don't like, or we're going to burn your, your records, or we're going to pour out the liquor. You done already bought it. Y'all might as well enjoy it. Just don't buy no more. So stupid. Anyway. But this is fun reality TV that I'm okay with, right? I do not like the unfun reality TV where we talking about S.A., and paternity of people's kids and stuff like that. This is the fun act. This is the fun reality stuff that you pouring products out that you know good and dad going well. You going to turn around and buy some more next week. Because by the end of this episode, the husband's been made up. But we'll get to that. So then we have Heather meeting up with, um, I don't even remember this lady name. Because she is so not important to me. The lady that's dating the Osmond boy. Do y'all know how stupid she looks? Does she know how... Not y'all, y'all know. Does she know how stupid she looks and sounds on this TV show? You bring another man to this party, and then you end up crying when the, the, the Osmond man shows up. Then you end up going outside, talking to the Osmond man, telling him you miss him, and he miss you, and this, this, and this, 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 and that. And then his, the last thing he says to you is, well, go back inside to your date. And Heather is really trying to have a, Heather is trying to have an honest girl conversation with her saying, look, girl, you looking real stupid right now. She's trying to tell you without breaking the fourth wall, but she's basically saying, you looking real stupid down to this TV show right now. I need you to know that when this shit air, it ain't going to look good for you. That's what she was trying to tell her. She said, I thought you told me you wanted to try to fix the relationship with your kids. She told me some, well, we can do two things at one time. Not if the reason why your kids don't F with you is because they feel like you always put a man in front of them. 
How you going to rectify your relationship with your with your kids while you trying to chase after this man who has clearly told you he does not want to be with you? He may want to have sex with you. He may like hanging out with you. He may like talking to you. He may even like spending time with you. But he has been very clear that he is not trying to wife you. I don't even think he's trying to girlfriend you. I need you to focus on what's important. And what's important is you trying to get back over here and create a good friendship, a relationship with your kids. I can't. This is just stupid. So we have Broadwin and her husband having um lunch. They had one of those little outside igloos. You know, I ate in one of those igloos during the, during um COVID when a lot of restaurants had put those so you could like be in your own little silo. It was kind of cute. And I could see like um in Utah where it's cold as hell, you could still kind of be outside but not really outside because the little igloo is warm on the inside. I thought that was cute. Um we found out that Broadwin likes to act a fool and show up at the airport in weird costumes to embarrass her husband. Listen, if they like it, I love it. But in my mind, I would be, if I were her husband, I would be thinking, you have way too much time on your hand. I need you to find a hobby. I need you to join a civic organization. Start a company. Sell some candles. I don't give a fuck. But I feel like you need to find something else to do with your time. If you have time to show up at the airport in a different costume, every time I come home, you need to find something else to do. So she talks about how she wants to plan this trip down to Palm Springs. I really wish these ladies would find somewhere else to go. I mean, I know they did go to Milwaukee and I wasn't like excited about the whole Milwaukee experience. Um, but I'd rather them go back to Milwaukee than go back to Palm Springs. But anyway, they're going to Palm Springs for their anniversary and she's telling him about how she feels some kind of way. She's not going to invite Brittany. Is it her name, Brittany? The, the Mormon girl, I mean, the, the one dating the Osmond, her name Brittany, right? She's not inviting her. And I don't blame her. And I feel like she really don't have a good reason for not inviting her. I feel like she just thinks she's stupid. Because I didn't really hear a good reason for her not to invite her other than she dumb chasing after this Osmond man. I keep calling him a boy. He's not a boy. He's a grown man. But y'all get the point. So then... She starts talking to him about what had happened with um, her daughter and her daughter's grandparents. And I feel like her husband let her get it all out because he understands the assignment. But basically, when she got done talking, he was like, look, I really don't want to talk about this no more. You know how I feel about it. And we're going to move forward. Those people have never wanted to be a part of that child's life. They have never done anything nice for her. They have never extended themselves to her. So honestly, at this point, I'm not really concerned about them doing it now. And if they've already upset my daughter, because that's his daughter, if they have already upset my daughter before they've even had a chance to meet her, yeah, I ain't really, I'm not really with it. And she was like, well, I can't tell her that. He was like, I don't see why not. I mean, if they ain't shit, they ain't shit. And I'm okay with you telling her that. And I, I, I see where he coming from. Even though last week I said I appreciated that Broadwin did not allow her own personal opinion to get in the middle of what her daughter's decision was going to be. But I understand how he feel. He like, look, I picked up the pieces. I've been, been her daddy. My family have been treating her like like grand, her dead granddaughter and everything else. I mean, I don't know that to be a fact. I'm just going to assume that that's how it went down. But... Understand where he coming from. He said, and I'm done with this. I said my piece. Are we done filming? Cause cause he was done. So then we see Lisa's sisters in town. So we see Lisa going, uh, they're going out to lunch. And listen. So Lisa is talking about how she feels some kind of way about the whole situation. And then she starts talking about Henry and her, her other son and how, you know, the oldest son was, you know, a lot more outgoing, had really good friends. And the younger son sort of kind of, you know, latched on to Henry and his friends. And now that he's gone, his son, you know, the, the youngest son is sort of trying to figure out, figure it all out. And then she tells a story about how Jack, that's his name. No, Jack is the, is Jack the oldest one? Y'all know which one I'm talking about. The oldest and the youngest. It's Jack and Henry. But I honestly, right now, I think Jack is the oldest. No, Henry's the oldest. I'm not about to spend a whole lot of time on it. Y'all know who I'm talking about. But I be listening to stuff that people are saying and reading between the lines. So Lisa gets upset telling this story about how the youngest son had a birthday party. And basically nobody came to his party. But did y'all peep what Lisa said? 
Lisa said, well, he sent out last minute invitations to his birthday party and all of the kids in his school decided to go to another kid's party. So let, let me, let me make sure I understand. I was invited to a birthday party two weeks ago. I said I was going to go to that birthday party two weeks ago. A week later, your son sends out an invitation for a party that's going to happen that weekend. And I'm supposed to change my plans or I'm supposed to, my, ch my child is supposed to change their plans. So I don't think his friends left him hanging or treated him bad. I think you poorly planned a birthday party and your son suffered from it because he decided to do something at the last minute and expected everybody to just be available and they weren't. I, I mean, I understand it might've hurt his feelings, but I also feel like we, I don't feel like that's a good example. And then for you to turn around and be like, I am a good mother. I'm not saying you're a bad mother, Lisa. But what I am saying is that's not a good example to show that he does his friends, he don't really have good friends. I just don't feel like that's a good example. Because if it were my child, I would tell my child, no, you're going to go to the party you said you were going to go to. If you RSVP and they're expecting you, that's the party you're going to. Am I tripping? Put it in the comments if I'm tripping. Okay. So then... Bronwyn, Whitney, and um, Angie, they're out walking and they're, you know, recapping what happened down to the, um, to the Mafia Wives party. Whitney is once again saying that, you know, Lisa did it. She's got proof that Lisa did it. She's talking about the husbands getting into it. Bronwyn tells them about the Palm Springs party um, situation and how she's not inviting... Um, Brittany, but she feels, but she's thinking about inviting Heather, but she's just not sure where her and Heather stand. So she's going to, you know, invite Heather over to have a conversation with Heather. Now, I'm going to be honest with y'all. Y'all kept telling me, wait till I watch this episode, wait till I watch this episode, because I don't know what y'all thought my response to Heather was going to be. I don't know what Heather did in this conversation with Bronwyn that I'm supposed to be upset about. So y'all might, maybe I should have went live with this review because I need y'all to explain to me because... I must have missed it, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Okay. So then we see Heather go to um, a church meeting. Heather and Angie go to Brittany's church meeting. And so we get another glimpse into, I guess, these are the things that they do in the Mormon, Mormon lifestyle. Angie, why in the hell would you show up to a Mormon prayer meeting with a bottle of wine? Mormons don't drink. Even if you've seen Whitney, I mean, Brittany drink, that is still not an, an, a, that's not a party favor you bring when there's a whole group. And y'all, you know, she's trying to act right for them, for her, her daddy was there. Her sister was there. Her cousins were there. Like, just cause you seen that woman drink, that is not an appropriate gift to bring to a Mormon church meeting. Girl, you could have just bought like some, some cupcakes. You could have bought a charcuterie board, char charcuterie board. You could have made a lot of different decisions other than bring a bottle of wine. Moving right along. So after the meeting is over, because we don't care about the meeting. After the meeting is over, Angie is talking to Heather about how Bronwyn is feeling. And, and Heather is like, so I'm not, so what, I mean, what? She wants to talk to me. What does she want to talk to me about? Does she want to talk to me about apologizing? Because I feel like she's been really shitty towards me. So, I mean, is that what we're apologizing for? Because, I mean, okay. And again, we'll get to that conversation when we get to that conversation. And let's be clear. I still like Bronwyn, but we'll get to that conversation when we get to that conversation. So, that was pretty much what happened down to the prayer meeting. So, then... I guess the next scene is the meeting. So, no, the next scene is the husbands. Child, I don't care nothing about these husbands. They made up, child. They talked about what you did that I like and what you didn't do and what I did and what I why I said and what didn't happen. Child, they fine. Like I said, they was they was fine. They probably went out after that and went and played golf or something. They all right. The husbands all right. At least for now, they are. So, Bronwyn invites Whitney to her house. And let me tell you something. Reason number one why I was team Heather in this conversation is because 
what what is wrong with with you inviting people to your house with dogs? Like your your dogs ain't trained. See, I don't I don't understand this people. These okay, you can have six dogs, and there is dog sh all over the house and dog pee all over the house. I need y'all to know I would have gagged. Like I physic my body would have physically gagged. If I'm walking through this woman's house and there's just random dog droppings and dog pee all over the place. Because you know what that tells me? That tells me that this is just how you live. Because if you can't straighten that up when you're expecting company, then that is how you live up in that house. You'll just be in that house with your dogs running around, pooping and, and peeing all over that damn house. That nice, expensive house with that expensive ass um, um, doc, uh, decorations and furniture and shit. And you just letting the dogs literally do that all over the house. That's nasty. And I probably would have had to gag. Because I know it stink. I know that house stink. The minute she opened the door, I know that house stink. You don't have no plug-ins. You don't have no diffusers. You don't have nothing going on in that house. You know why I know you don't have nothing going on in that house? Because it did not bother you to be walking back and forth. You weren't even embarrassed by it. You weren't even like, oops, I'm so sorry. I have a dog who's a little bit older. And they just, you know, they're, they're having a hard time with the bathroom thing. Like, you didn't offer no explanation, no apologies, no nothing. And you did not even seem like it was bothering you. Your house stink, your house is nasty, and I don't want to eat nothing from at the company potluck from Brown's house unless it got a, a sticker on it from a store and it has not been opened. That's nasty. Moving right along. So then Brown and, he and Heather sit down to have a conversation. Listen. I do not know what y'all want me to say that Heather did wrong in this conversation. I understood where Heather was coming from 100%. Now, do I understand Bravin's point? I absolutely do. Bravin's point is, look, girl, you talk shit, I talk shit, but when I was talking shit, you called me out and made it seem like I did something wrong when you do the exact same thing that I do. Heather was like, you're right. I don't know what else you want from Heather after Heather admitted that what Bronwyn said was an accurate description of the situation. Heather was like, she was, Bronwyn was like, but that's messy. Heather was like, you're right. It is messy. Did I, I watched it twice. Cause I said, maybe I missed something. I watched it twice. Y'all. I don't understand. I don't know what y'all want me to say. Cause Heather agreed with Bronwyn that she was messy. So then Bronwyn, so then Heather was like, I'm not even sure why you invited me over here if you didn't invite me over here to, for us to come to some resolve. But you want me to just apologize why you don't really want to admit that you didn't do anything wrong. I'm not sure what you want from me. She says, well, honestly, I invited you because I am having this trip to Palm Springs and I'm not really sure if I want to invite you. So then Heather was like, oh, so I'm supposed to like sing for my supper and beg for an invitation to go to Palm Springs? Heather, I feel like, again, I feel like Heather. So you invited me over here to apologize to you so I could get invited to your damn, to your little situation? I'm with Heather. I'd have been like, girl, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to get out this shitty house that stink with these dogs running around. And Heather was actually eating the food. Heather, I wouldn't have ate a damn thing. I don't even think I would have let her pour me a glass of water. I need a bottle of water out of the refrigerator that has not been opened. I don't want nothing out of this house that had that the seal has been broken. I wouldn't have ate nothing from that house. So that was the episode. I again. I don't know what y'all wanted me to get from that. Because y'all kept telling me, ooh, really be, wait till you watch this, that next episode, which I did. And I actually watched it twice. Because I watched it the first time and then I didn't do my reviews. So I had to watch it again to make sure I refresh my memory on everything I wanted to say. So I watched it twice. Let me know what y'all think. Tell me in the comments what I missed. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.